Hey y'all, it's Teresa with One Love, One Light. Welcome to your message, as above, so below. So we have a pick a pile here today. Pile one, two, and three. First pile is dolphins. Sorry, I'm working with new lighting. Pile number two, heart. And pile number three, triangle. All right, I will start with pile one. The timestamps will be in the description and I will try to post it as the, or pin it to the comment, first comment. All right, let's get started. Pile number one. So we have dolphins with playfulness and cooperation. So what I'm getting here is like, um, I mean, the first thing that came to mind is like inner child healing, the need for more fun. Um, I'm also getting like heart and head, um, what do they call that? Coherence. But I also feel like if there is some inner child healing that you're going to find um, that you're, you're able to hear your intuition much stronger. That's what I'm getting with that. So let's see what else comes out. All these piles. We'll just put those here for now. So we have this as a significator. And then we have these three. These to the side. Tarot cards. And then we have some of these others here. I hope you can see that okay. All right, so this is just Major Arcana. Let's see which one you have. And we have the star, beautiful. So definitely talks about healing as above, so below. So definitely including, I would, I would include astrology in your healing process as far as um, coming to terms with your identity and with um, some of the challenges that you may be facing. There's definitely a lot of insight that will come from astrology. I'm also getting here. As some of some of you may like know sign language or that may be a way that you're going to connect with children for some reason. I'm getting with the dolphin there. But I also feel like you're you may be destined to be in the limelight. There may be something where you are um, you have a goal with some type of spiritual business or emotional um, healing practice. I'm getting um, there's something about your energy going out, but also coming in, and that's kind of the as above, so below as well. And that's what we're getting here with like the star, the silhouette of the star is here, but it's also below. So it's like, you know, saying that there's a mirror happening there. So I feel like um, pile one, you're definitely, your astrology is definitely affecting your, um, your healing process, whether it is inner child or whatever process you're going through. Um, there's wish fulfillment 
feel like your intuition is going to be crucial. Your emotional body with that dolphin and water energy there. Let's see what else we have. Um, I want those. Hmm. Let's go with these. And we have the dragon. So that is, um, this is the spiritual element within the animal deck there. So we have the dragon, a lot of spiritual energy here. And we have the buffalo. So it's almost like the spiritual or the ethereal or ima uh, imaginative with the dragon and then bringing that into the bringing that down into your root chakra or into the earth plane. So as above, so below. So let's see what the book has to say about the dragon and the buffalo. These are not too long, so bear with me. I think they give good insight. So let's start with the dragon. Um, Okay, seeing one's most true self, balancing the ego. The dragon sees everything. Its essence has been with us since before our first breath and will be there at our last. It watches us navigate the external world as well as our inner world. When <laughs> external and inner, you know, as above, so below, so within, so without. When dragon energy is awakened, we are courageous, visionary, and can easily drop into witness consciousness. It is almost as if we are traveling with a great friend inside of ourselves. When we look in the mirror deep into our eyes, we may even glimpse the self behind the self, the one who is watching us. This is the power of the dragon breathing transformative fire into every cell of our bodies. Witnessing this omnipotent energy, even for a brief moment, helps us surrender and let go. We let the dragon guide us. We hop on its back for a ride, and as we traverse even the most difficult terrain, the dragon's eyes see beauty everywhere. It is said that if a yogi does not see beauty in the world, their Agni is dim. I hope I'm saying that right. Agni is described as inner fire or sacred intelligence. May even just the mention of the dragon stir the embers of intelligence within you. And I feel like that is definitely connected with the uh, dolphins because of the intelligence and buffalo are also very intelligent. So the dragon is directly associated with the, um, the third chakra, which lives at the na natal, navel center in the Manapura chakra. The Manapura translates to the city of hidden gems and behind its gates burns the fire of our transformation and digestion. The sages believe health of the fire at the navel center is what governs our ability to clearly see both the inner and outer dimensions. So perfect for this reading as far as as above, so below. So let's see what the buffalo, how we can bring that in regarding the buffalo. I always have trouble with these because they're not like an alphabetical or anything and I'm, I don't use them often enough to remember. Oh, here we go. Good. All right. So grounded yet heavenly, practical yet spiritual. The hooves of the mighty buffalo are grounded in the earth, yet its heart and mind rise towards heaven. The buffalo sees challenge, hardship, or a bump in the road as an opportunity for upliftment. Therefore, the buffalo does not fear death, illness, or misfortune. Its gentle eyes look to the road ahead, trusting every turn. May we all experience this elusive yet life-changing bliss from time to time. And may we allow this card to remind us that life is a precious gift. So it's talking about trusting and pure presence and possible restlessness and lack lacking gratitude so to bring into balance it says prayer and bhakti i think it is but i feel like you know just grounded yet heavenly practical yet spiritual it's that polarity that um that as above so below that it's when you say polarity it doesn't necessarily mean opposites it's they are on the same pole they are on the same plane if you will so that is, um, I feel like, 
also very important to consider. All right, let's see what else we have here. So we have the Eight of Cups. I feel like there is something, you know, this wish fulfillment, there is like um, maybe something that you are needing to leave or a challenge to overcome in order to get to your wish fulfillment. And I feel like with this buffalo here and the dragon, it's almost like needing to see the higher perspective and then just get to work putting one foot in front of the other. And then we have the Seven of Cups, wow. So the Seven of Cups can be about fantasizing or being overwhelmed emotionally, um, not being able to see clearly, being disconnected from your intuition. So we talked about that with the dolphins is that, you know, maybe healing that inner child or just um, bringing in uh, more playfulness or um, downtime will help you to better hear your intuition, better connect with it so that you're not feeling so overwhelmed. This also could be that you have a lot of options or too many options. And it's almost like, how do you choose? But your intuition will guide you directly to what's in your highest good. And then we have the fool. So definitely there is this pull to go on a new path, you know, and then there's just this child energy. So both here, I feel like this is, um, is about you experiencing something you're, you may have gone through a test of faith and the star is there to restore your faith, to give you something to focus on, to guide you back towards your, um, the path that's meant for you and to help guide you towards your highest good, towards your wish fulfillment. All right, what else do we have here? Let's see, let's take this one. Oh, the shadow, number 28. So 28 may be significant, 82. Um, 28. That's a 10, that's ending one cycle and beginning another, so a 10 that becomes a one. So I feel like this star light, I'm almost getting hermit energy as well as the fool because it's like this, uh, the fool goes up the mountain to um, kind of regain their light and regain or ignite, reignite the light within them to find the wisdom, to um, find themselves. And then it's like they capture that star energy and that's what guides them, right? In the traditional depiction of the hermit. So I'm feeling like there's something about going into hermit mode and um, really dealing with the shadow and being able to recognize that both need to exist in order, right? As above, so below. So there's always both need to exist one and the other, or both need each other to exist, right? If that makes sense. Let's see what else we have here. We have Archangel Metatron with wisdom. We definitely got that wisdom here several times with, um, with the dolphins, with the dragon and the buffalo. There's like this wisdom that you're tapping into within um, that is there from lifetime after lifetime. So it's available to you and your intuition is what guides you and um, brings to your attention these things, these this wisdom, things that you couldn't have possibly known or learned in this lifetime. So I feel like, um, yeah, that's like the key. And this we have the Sphinx here. So I feel like, you know, it's the key to certain mysteries. Um, moving forward. Yeah, I really feel like you're being guided towards um, a higher calling, some kind of spiritual calling. Um, it shows here with the dolphin cooperation. So you may be um, kind of being drawn in towards your, your spiritual tribe. Um, you know, people that think just like you or similar, similarly to you. Okay, what else do we have? 
we have a look at the bigger picture. Well, as above, so below. So looking th at things from a higher perspective, um, looking at things, full moon in Sagittarius. So looking at things as um, how they affect like the greater good. That's what I'm getting here. And it's also about like the purpose behind things, um, the purpose behind maybe why you have gone through certain trials and tribulations and being able to draw the wisdom from it and, and um, I recognize that there were lessons to learn as well as um, like we talked about the star drawing you back to your path. Um, these eight of cups that are, um, they look broken and you're willing to leave uh, your current situation to probably face a major challenge, but you know on the other side of that challenge is your wish fulfillment. So I feel like that it's like looking beyond just the here and now, knowing that maybe what you're going through now is going to be what the stepping stone or the catapult towards what's, um, what's even better or something that is a wish fulfillment or a promise that you feel a birthright, whatever it is that you are going after or that you feel is missing at this point. What else do we have? We have communi communication is key, new moon in Gemini. So we have full moon and new moon. So I just, I feel like this is also playing into the whole, like needing the shadow and the light. like. You, you set your intentions on the new moon and, you know, then it manifests on the full moon. It doesn't have to be that way. I will say that. Um, be mindful of how the moon affects you personally because you could have your own personal rhythm within that is, is what I've experienced. So, um, yes, that seems to be the general um, thought is that we set our intentions on the new moon and then we manifest on the full moon but whatever you feel whatever your moods or your rhythms um how they uh tend to um mirror with the moon cycles utilize that to your benefit but it is saying communication is key so there may be something where um you know, you're feeling like you don't understand or you're overwhelmed with whatever is going on in your world. Too many options. Maybe there's just too much chaos going on around you. And I feel like there's something about communicating that, um, not trying to hide the fact that you are overwhelmed. Like be um, open about that. That's what I'm getting here. Because it's almost like when you admit this, that, that, part of yourself or a weakness or something that you perceive as a weakness, then others can feel comfortable to engage with that as well. All right, what else do we have? We have Neptune with sacrifice. I feel like, yeah, there is something about um, the things that you've been through um, ne Neptune sacrifice. Hmm. Well, we definitely have Neptune with this water energy over here. I'm going to go ahead and read what the book says about this Neptune energy. Neptune can be very tricky. I know that it is, it's in Pisces. Is it retrograde? I should have checked that. Shouldn't, shouldn't I have? All right, let's see. Got my glasses this time. If you watched last time, I was struggling without my glasses. Okay. I mean, they're just readers. They're not prescription, but it is what it is. Okay. So I'm just going to look at the keywords for right now and see if this helps us. Imagination, escapism, mysticism, divination, other realms, and making contact with higher realms, communication with ghosts and other spirits, links to links to the universal mind, the ocean of consciousness, sudden flights of inspiration, artistic ability, the artist life, self-sacrifice, self-undoing, the creating of illusions, dangerous deceptions, 
narcotics, alcoholic drinks, toxins, and poisons, um, needing to flee and become more private. I mean, a lot of these things tend to go with this is what I'm thinking. And I feel like um, some of the sacrifices that you made, you may have regretted. Um, and I feel like this, this journey or this look at the shadow, this hermit, I mean, I know the hermit's not here, but I keep getting that, is that there's a possibility that you have some, you know, bitterness or some type of regret for certain sacrifices that you have made. So I feel like that is some intense energy. Um, it also, I also feel like there's something about where this falls in your birth chart as where, as well as where Pisces falls in your birth chart that can help you have even more insight to the situation. Because it's here with the star card and the dolphins, I just feel like there's something very significant there. All right, what else do we have? We have Mars. Your physical energy drives strength and fighting spirit. So I'm also getting, you know, with um, the Fool there, that is, you know, Aries energy. So there may be something that is, I feel like this is more like conflict within, but um, that's funny. Even though Mars is not um, Sagittarius, but we have this arrow, you know, here, and then you have somebody like about to cast an arrow or however you say it, shoot an arrow, cast an arrow. So there is something where there may be a confrontation or some type of fighting spirit that's kind of coming up within you. Um, you may have some, um, you may have, you may have to battle with yourself in this shadow, but I also feel like um, you're being equipped. You're being equipped with the knowledge here, the wisdom to be able to engage in some type of um, confrontation without it having to be physical. That's what I'm getting here. So communication is key, maybe not going the aggressive way, but I also get that this could be just about the divine masculine. Let's see what else we have. And we have cancer, right? So cancer is the divine in, in essence, um, you know, is ruled by the moon. So it says this energy is emotional, sensitive, caring, and loving. It may concern family, a mother, or a child. So we do have that childlike energy that's come up several times here. So I feel like there's something, I mean, maybe you have Mars in Cancer, um, but I feel like there's something about um, some shadow uh or old wounds that need to be healed, maybe some aggressive or abusive things that happened in the, you know, as a child, um, in the home life, something like that it doesn't have to be. I just think that that's for some of you, but, and sometimes we can have a hard time, um, kind of reconciling why we would have to go through that. Like, but, um, if you think about where you are now and, um, the trajectory of where you're headed, you would not be where you are and you wouldn't have the wisdom that you have. You wouldn't have the prospects that you do have. Um, look at the bigger picture. Yeah, really look at the bigger picture here. All right, let's get some of these Naked Heart Tarot. We'll just get a few of these to see what else. Holy Spirit, what else do you have for pile one? Anything else for pile one? anything else for pile one. So I do feel like this is a really significant time for you. And I feel like you've been doing a lot of, you've sacrificed a lot to go through this shadow work is what I'm feeling. And I feel like now it's time to just kind of, um, you know, head off in a new adventure, take a leap of faith and, you know, not take things quite so seriously. Um, like look at things from maybe not so serious of a standpoint. Yeah, like and this is like an invitation to an adventure right here. That's what I'm getting. Definitely. The movement of wands. That's the um, Knight of Wands. 
So there's definitely some type of, you know, something that has your attention that you want to go towards. And we have the Eight of Cups there. We have this Mars energy. So there's something that you're feeling drawn towards and you are feeling motivated and inspired to take action or to move to, you know, it's not just sit there and think about it. It's definitely movement towards this. What else? Yeah, we have the two of wands. So it's something that it may be like you're at a crossroads, but there's something that you're being pulled in a certain direction with that seven of cups. Um, I feel like this is just saying like, what do you want your future to look like? And then use your intuition as to which road is going to take you there. That's what I'm getting with that. What else do we have? Oh, we got two here. We have the Ace of Pentacles. So this could be definitely a new beginning, a new offer, a uh, potential for something that is going to bring you abundance, prosperity. Um, it's something where you're really feeling like there's a strong potential. We just had the, um, we're, it, we're still in the full moon energy, the buck moon. So I feel like this is significant. It's kind of like saying, that new beginning starts now. And you did get that buffalo with this earth energy. So, I mean, you could be, earth sign doesn't have to be. I just feel like there's something very practical, yet um, kind of inspiring to, to head out, you know, about this energy. Oh, and then we have the two of cups. So this could all be, we, you know, we do have um, the new moon in Gemini, which is the lovers to me. So this two of cups also pulls me to that direction. You know, you may be really drawn to connecting with a particular person or that could be where this potential is taking you. It could be a love offer. It could just be that this adventure will lead you to a soulmate of some kind. Anything else? Anything else for pile one? We got the star. Amazing. I love it when spirit does that. Just a confirmation that you are the star and you deserve the attention. You are worthy. Um, this is like recognizing your value, letting your, letting the light shine from within. And, you know, it's like, that's what's going to draw in others to to see that light within you is let it shine out. It doesn't have to be held in. That's what I'm getting here. So that's the big thing with pile one is the star energy. And yes, there is that starlight, that beautiful starlight that's guiding you. That is, um, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's a really bright light. Even though you've been through the shadow, I feel like that shadow is what, um, makes the light seem even that much more bright all right and at the bottom of the deck we do have the eight of swords so i feel like that's where you're coming from and you're coming out of that and you're going to be able to see the beauty despite the thorns that's what i'm getting here so those are the messages that came through for you pile one thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please 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 subscribe and remember the universe has your back and so do i take care Sorry if you're watching this straight through because I don't edit very well. So let's get pile two ready.
All right, pile two, you pick the heart. And this is about love and new love. Um, could be self-love, um, having love for a situation, a um, person, place, or thing. Um, I'm also getting like something about the memories of love. Like looking back and, and having love for a situation. Maybe even a situation that uh, you haven't given love to. But it's time to give love to it. Because it's almost like it needs compassion and forgiveness. You need compassion and forgiveness for whatever um, you went through. For the decisions that you made. Maybe you need to forgive yourself and um, have more understanding of, of you doing the best that you could with what you had at the time, with the knowledge that you had, with the resources that you had, with the um, awareness of whatever the situation was. That's what I'm getting a strong um, kind of look back on maybe old relationships or old memories um, that really could use some love. It could be old people, not old people, but old, um, you know, uh, relationships or the people in these relationships that you are reminiscing about all right let's see what else we have let's take all of those we'll just set these to the side this is just a major arcana it'll be like the significator and then we have some tarot and some animal cards. So let's see what the major arcana is. And we have the moon. So yeah, there could be some healing that you're trying to do, some um, kind of looking within, some introspection. There could be like some type of intuition that you're getting about a person that you're feeling drawn to um, definitely see some cancer energy here uh, with the moon so I just feel like there's something that is drawing you in um, at the heart level and it's really imperative that you allow your intuition to guide you not necessarily what you see because you know with the moon we can't really see because it's dark but we feel our way through a situation we allow our intuition to guide us because we can't necessarily see through the darkness i also feel like your heart is going to light up and light your way i got that a little bit with pile one too so if you feel drawn to that or if you if that statement resonates with you you may want to check out pile one so there is um with love and we you know the moon is a reflection of the sun right so i feel like there is this period of reflection and that's what i was getting with that heart card there so let's see what else we have the high priest is yes with the moon of course yes yes so Cancer, Pisces, I'm getting, um, doesn't have to be, maybe you are connecting with um, one of those signs, um, or maybe you're just really tapping into your own intuition, but I feel like it's necessary, but it's also, I feel like there's something about seeing beyond what your physical eyes can see, and that can even be when you're looking back on a situation. It's not so much what you physically experienced or what you saw happen. It's about um, what your intuition is telling you, um, the underlying reason, reading between the lines, whatever that is. I feel like, you know, with the high priestess, there is that, um, you know, like seeing beyond the veil, seeing beyond what is just physically seen. Right, and then we have the five of wands. So there may be some like pain in your heart or in, in you know, old wounds in your heart uh, regarding connected with love that is affecting your intuition and causing like an internal conflict where you're not able to necessarily or you're not trusting your guidance. So it's kind of sending you in all different directions because there is fear, there is, you know, 
it's like your intuition is trying to tell you something, but you also have the fear of the outcome, the fear of trusting yourself and not being, you know, right. And um, all of the, the things that go along with whatever it is that you're trying to resolve here or come to terms with. Because I do feel like there's something that you are like looking at within or trying to get through a situation or you may be really seeking guidance about a love situation or about a situation and all of this comes into play and I feel like um, maybe you never realized how much that affects you know everything in your life as far as needing to heal needing to look at things needing to bring the light into you know do that introspection and and light up those things that have been kind of pushed away or pushed under the rug for maybe a very long time oh wow and then we have the sun yeah light it up bring the light into the situation and i feel like this is saying like you're going to get the healing you're going to get clarity you're going to um you know, this reflection is going to bring forth the answers that you need, the joy, the success, whatever it is that you're going after. Um, it's going to open your heart to um, what you truly desire. Let's see what else we have. These are the animal cards. We have the shark. So yeah, the shark is um, water energy, but you know, it's not necessarily the first thing you think of as far as um, healthy emotions, right? But let's see what the book has to say. We'll read that one. And I do have my glasses this time, thank God. All right, the shark. Oh, wow. Okay, so the shark. <laughs> Directness, exposure. There we go with the exposure. Revealing true nature and desire. The shark is only dangerous when we don't acknowledge it. This card indicates that something big needs to be exposed. It's lurking in the depths and creating tension. Shark energy takes over us when we are hesitant to be honest, to be totally ourselves, or to say what we really want. It may be tempting to continue pretending nothing is wrong, but when shark energy is at play, we feel its presence encircling us. So it's like talking about intrigue, um, captivating, mysterious. We got that with the high priestess, um, but it's also this destructive energy. Like I said, you know, it can turn things upside down and you may not even realize how much maybe an old wound in your heart can send your, you know, your natural guidance system into a tailspin here. So that's what I'm getting here. You know, the sharks definitely um, rely on their natural um, magnetic um, guidance system. And so if there's things that are affecting that, obviously they're not going to get where they need to go or get the guidance of where they're trying to go, right? Oh, and then we have another more water energy, lots of um, water energy here, emotion, I should say the oyster. So yeah, there's definitely something about kind of closing up and not necessarily um, making available your emotional, maybe you, you have your heart closed, um, but it's kind of trapping that intuition, that spiritual connection you have with the emotional body. But let's go ahead and read the oyster as well. Oops, probably passed it up. There we go. Patient, secret keeper. That's the high priestess hiding in her treasures. The focus and determination of the oyster is unmatched. Anything an oyster personality puts their mind to, they achieve with grace and charm. The only problem is oyster types often take their inner gifts for granted. They become shy or doubtful, and this can lead to withdrawing or protecting their deepest desires and life's work. When the oyster card appears, it's important to reveal your inner treasures. 
What is it you've been hesitant to share? The world is waiting to see. So it's talking about feeling blessed, generous, and masterful, right? With that sun energy. And when out of balance, it's reluctant, gripping, and clams up, right? So yeah, I feel like that's what we were talking about here is that, um, you know, it can be like your best friend in a way, your emotional sensitivity, your spiritual gifts, your intuition, but it can also, this is like kind of telling you the shadow side of those things that is not necessarily helpful and you may not even realize it. All right, what else do we have? Let's get these cards here. We have a time for healing, balsamic moon, wow. So there is, I'm just kidding, a lot of moon, well, these are moon cards, but um, the balsamic moon, I'm a Pisces balsamic moon in my birth chart. Um, yeah, I just feel like there's definitely this heart healing. There's a need to understand though. It's not just about saying like, I need time, I need to grieve, or I need to, you know, sew up the wound. It's like really being able to bring that light in and kind of, um, I'm not saying like dissect it, but be able to come to terms with the wounds that you do have so that you can almost turn them into something of beauty is what I'm getting here. And then we have expect powerful change, new, new moon eclipse. Wow. So it's more about this big change coming, I feel like from the darkness and then the light, you know, like exposing that. That's what I'm getting here. All right, what else? We have number 60 with the kiss and there's that moon again. So definitely something with this heart. This could have been a relationship. Um, and I'm not calling anybody out, but I feel like for some, it's the lack of a relationship or a relationship that you really wanted that didn't happen. That could be causing you to clam up or feeling like you have a missed opportunity or regrets that could be causing all of this. Maybe you feel like you're you can't trust your intuition because you made some type of decision where you went this direction and this person or the love that you, you know, were after went the other direction. But just remember that um, everything happens the way that it was supposed to. And what do they say? Rejection is God's protection. Not that you were rejected, but if that is the case, just know that, um, like, I don't know. I, I just got this message from another reading I was watching. It's like, who don't place so much importance on what one person thought of you? That's what I'm getting. Like, who are they? Their rejection should not mean this much to you if it was a rejection. That's what I'm getting here. And I feel like once you're able to realize that there is that someone that is for you, it's going to really change you. There's something about the colors here and the colors here as well. Something about vibrancy, right? When we have that here, it's like there's, it's not just light coming in, but it's going to be like really um, dynamic. It's gonna be like just so different, powerful change. All right, Let's see what else we have here. We have Archangel Raziel with Retreat. Wow, that same color here with that. And and it's like we have these, um, I feel like these are ascended masters or something here. It's also about these secrets. Oh my goodness. These secrets that the high priestess is aware of. You know, because this could be like about um, Anunnaki and Thoth and Atlantis and, you know, Egyptian gods. Like, there's something that um, this high priestess, this may be something in your um, past life that is significant to you. This may be something that is like um, of interest to you that is like your escape where you, you know, feel like you can um, kind of 
tap into another world, but it may be that there is um, direct wisdom there that's going to help you um, be guided towards this healing and this powerful change. Okay, and we have, wow, Grand Trine Blessings, number 46, which is um, a 10. So it's like an ending and a beginning. So there is some type of major blessing coming in and we have the sun here. So it's almost like you're going to go through this time of conflict where you may feel like you're in the dark or going through dark times or shadow times. This healing could make you feel like that. But look beyond that and you're going to have these great blessings. That's what I'm getting here. And there is somebody that's perfect for you if this is about love. That's what I'm also getting. Wow, great blessings. Okay, and then we have zodiac sign Virgo. So maybe this is all going to happen in um, Virgo season, could be. But it's also about like the harvest is what I'm getting here. And it says, the energy around you is dutiful, hesitant, and humble with a discriminating, diligent, and painstaking air. So, yeah, I mean, like I was getting, it could be that you're dealing with um, a Virgo, you know, it could be. Um, but I'm also getting that there's something, some of you may have a Virgo moon, Virgo sun. Um, well, first off, I'm getting like this retreat to the countryside type thing. I don't know what that's about. But I feel like um, because we have so much water energy here, I'm also getting like you need to get grounded. And we have all this, you know, the high priestess, this moon, like this, this the way that you're going to heal is getting out in nature, going out to the countryside. That's what I'm getting here. Um, is going to be crucial to your healing if that makes sense. And with this water energy over here, you know, like with Pisces, their polar, the other end of the pole for them is Virgo. So this could also be about um, healing your health when it, Virgo definitely could be talking about your health. So um, I feel like this is also, you know, it says about um, diligent. I feel like there is like a certain path and just know that it may not necessarily look like this straight path or the outcome might not look exactly how you expect it to. And it won't pass you by, but it's like still be on the lookout for something that hits you right in the heart in the right way. It may not look like what you expect it to. And don't be disappointed. Just, just let go of being so... Uh, precise about how it's supposed to look. That's what I'm getting here. Maybe it's the type of person. You know, I always think that it's kind of um, ironic when people say, well, what's your type? If you knew what your type was, you'd already be with that person and you'd be successful in a relationship. I'm not saying for everybody, but in general. So if you're consistently going for a certain type, yet you're not in a relationship right now, maybe that's telling you something not calling you out. I know how it is. I'm just saying that sometimes we need that insight. Like maybe my type is not what's good for me. Um, that's just came to mind. Okay. And then we also have Jupiter expansion. Wow. Yeah. Um, your confidence, courage, self-belief, and luck. So the sun is definitely about, um, your confidence, your self-belief, um, Hmm. I'm feeling like with the shark here, like the shark can be extremely confident and believe and courageous, but it's like needing to heal that energy so that it is the, um, the light aspect of that and not the shadow aspect of that. I feel like Jupiter would come in and, and heal that energy. And this is also about with the oyster, it's about, you know, those gifts and having the confidence to share them instead of clamming up. And also, you know, being positive and, and feeling like um, what you have is worthy. You know, I feel like 
Uh, Virgo energy sometimes can be about not necessarily feeling worthy of attention or blessings or whatever it is, like measuring up. And Five of Wands is also about comparing yourself or competition. That's what it definitely can be about. So let's see what the tarot has. This has been a little bit um, like clear cut, but then the other details I feel like are, are just kind of other things that um, may or may not resonate with you, pile two. Maybe just certain people need um, these confirmations to, to know that this message is for them. Uh, what do we have for the tarot from the Naked Heart Tarot? What do we have? We have the Six of Swords. So <laughs> more water energy, like, you know, moving on to calmer waters, even though it is a swords and it's about, you know, how you think of yourself. But like removing yourself from um, a chaotic situation with like Five of Wands. Um, to be able to think clearly, to be able to, um, well, yeah, retreat, you know, like be able to um, think clearly, make sound decisions, and to um, remove yourself from any toxicity. That's what I'm getting here. What else do we have? Some of you could be going on vacation, and there could be a little bit of, maybe you're getting some strife about going on vacation somewhere warm and sunny tropical maybe and we have the queen of swords the heart of swords so yeah i feel like there's something here where um you know like if you're really hurt <laughs> you can become very bitter and um i feel like this can cut off your blessings so and disconnect you from your intuition. Queen of Swords is very clear, doesn't allow their thoughts to be invaded like that, but if they do, they can become very bitter and cold, um, but this is about you getting very clear about um, the direction you wanna go, and you know, it's like, where is my sun? Where is the light? Or where am I feeling drawn to? And um, the sun or the light is at the end of that tunnel. That's what I'm getting here. This powerful change, this healing that's needed. What else do we have? Yeah, the tower. So there is something like, I feel like the high priestess would see this coming, right? And be able to navigate the chaos, the turmoil, um, because it's like, um, being able to look beyond the situation or past the situation, knowing that there would be this healing, that there would be this big change that's going to be so significant and positive after the fact. So you got to see beyond that. So whether this is a relationship, whether this is a job or a living situation, whatever it is for you, the healing is coming, but it's like after you still have to like kind of have the fortitude and strength to go through the kind of turmoil of it. And then after is what's going to um, bring in all the good stuff, right? What else do we have? And we have the three of cups. Yeah, that's when you're, you'll are you have your celebration is it's like after you get beyond that, after you beat out the competition or survive the conflict, whatever it is, or this crashing of things then you're it's divine intervention if you can look at it that way then that's much more helpful but it's really um easier said than done when you're in the middle of the situation now it doesn't um it doesn't escape me here that uh this is all water right here like this flaming tree whatever is like in a tidal wave as well and there's just so much like water energy in this reading, even though it's not necessarily specific. Yeah. The bottom of the deck is the Knight of Wands, Movement of Wands. So there's definitely some type of adventure that is calling you. 
and it's like as soon as you it gets your attention you're going to want to go towards that so there there could be you know travel um some type again some type of uh, vacation or some type of blessing that's drawing you to it so that you can um, achieve it but powerful change a time for healing but powerful change that's how it comes in is through the tower but beyond the tower so those are the messages that came through for you thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please 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 subscribe and remember the universe has your back and so do i Take care. those of you that are watching straight through please mind don't mind my lack of editing skills here pile number three you picked the triangle choices indecision this could be a love triangle this could be um I feel like this could be an arrow pointing you towards a certain direction, but look, they're equal um, points. You know, this is like a, a what do they call these? Uh, um, I don't know if it's isosceles triangle or equal. Uh, I don't remember. I'm too old. Okay, so how would you know which one is the right one? Which one is the right direction? I feel like there are choices, this indecision. It's like, yeah, you see the directions, you see your available options very clearly, but doesn't mean that you're very clear on which direction to go. So your intuition is going to be crucial. Sometimes we are disconnected from our intuition, you know, as above, so below. So I feel like maybe this is about um, really uh, looking into your, um, birth chart, your astrology, that may be just the right guidance that helps you to confirm your intuition so that you can get past any, um, any past decisions that you feel like your intuition failed you. Just remember your intuition actually never fails you. It's just that sometimes fear and other emotions can get in the way of you actually hearing your intu intuition correctly or mistaking fear as your intuition. All right, so let's set up the rest of these cards. We have a major arcanas like the significator here. And then some tarot from the Wild Unknown Tarot. And then we have the animal, uh, what are they called? The animal spirit cards. All right, so let's see what this major arcana is. And we have the lovers. Oh, okay, so it is a love triangle, most likely. But it's a choice and you know the lovers is about a choice um i mean i feel like there's something like something about really understanding your heart understanding what is love to you okay like um because if it is a triangle and you're needing to choose between two people, hmm, maybe you're not quite sure what really defines love for yourself. But there's no judgment here because I know that there's, you know, um, a lot out there that just says, well, um, if you love someone, and then they fill in the blank. And I just feel like there's so many love languages. I don't know that you can actually do that. 
um, with any confidence and say that about everybody. So I don't actually know if there's um, a valid love expert out there except for, you know, spirit. That's what I'm getting. All right, let's look at the animal cards and see if this gives us any insight. We have the frog here. So this, it, it's just weird because that's a triangle, but I mean, that is, um, that is water here. But the frog spirit is about purification. It's definitely very spiritual. Let's see what the frog, frog knows which direction they want to go, I feel like, but um, let's see. Oh my God. I really just opened that straight to frog. And I, I mean, this, I really, I love this deck, but I have a hard time doing it for general readings because I can never find, because it's not in alphabetical and there's no numbers. So I always have a hard time. But anyways, that's just some significance there for me personally. All right, it says clearing, cleansing, healing. The frog and the water element are almost inseparable. The frog spends its first months of life entirely within this healing element and then emerges to rest on land. But no matter how earthly the frog becomes, its need for cleansing and rejuvenation is regular. Frogs tend to become overworked and undernourished, so it's vital that such sensitive creatures practice self-care. This card serves as a reminder that water helps us cleanse, forgive, and release. Time to dive in. Frogs aren't meant to carry a heavy load. So when in ba balance, clear energy and enthusiasm for life. And when out of balance, depleted, running on empty. So definitely to bring into balance, it's talking about going near a lake, river, ocean, or bathhouse. So I feel like... Um, I feel like there is like almost like a spiritual cleanse that needs to happen and some forgiveness and and some release letting go of things in order for you to properly make this choice or um or be able to trust your intuition or understand your emotions in a situation so it may be different for all of you let's see what else we have wow so pile number two also got two water elements or you know water animals so you may want to um you may want to check that pile too if this um resonates with you so the turtle hmm. let's see turtle Okay, let's read the turtle as well. Okay, no, this one I didn't <laughs> turn right to. <laughs> like, still looking for it. Ancient soul grounded trusting at home in the self it is wonderful to be in the presence of a turtle personality like the beaver the turtle has a strong relationship with the earth and water elements simultaneously this helps to ground and connect them to the deeper truths of life no matter where their travels lead them turtle energy is behind all great writers and storytellers as they collect life experiences under their shells for later use the most potent turtle energy helps us close all the other books and begin to tell our own true tale. So when in balance, it's peaceful, adventurous, and productive. And when out of balance, it slows down to a halt and to bring into balance an adventure. So um, I'm feeling like uh, it's slowed down to a halt because there's this indecision, not knowing which direction. So it's almost like this spiritual cleansing needs to happen. But let's get some more cards to see what else we have. We have the Six of Swords. Yeah, Six of Swords. So there is a need to kind of remove yourself from the situation. But see this rain? And there's rain here. And the rainbow will come. It's like... Um, yeah, removing yourself from the situation is part of 
the cleansing process is what I feel. And then you're going to be able to be able to think clearly to make a decision, whether it's about a love relationship or it's just a decision or choice that needs to be made. Sometimes the lovers is, you know, it is originally the choice card, but is it, it's about coming to a place of like connecting with what's best for you self-love like valuing yourself and knowing what's best for yourself coming to that place of connection intuitive selection is what i'm getting here we have the three of cups yeah with this triangle it's just like is there are you choosing between two people or are you one that is being, you know, someone is choosing between you and another that, that right there cannot feel good. I mean, you have to have compassion for whoever's going through that. Sometimes, you know, in the name of love, we may put ourselves through that, but you know, you never know, don't judge people. You never know what they feel, what vision they've had, what they feel in their heart, what type of connection they feel. They have fostered, um, you know, what destiny they see within their, you know, to be able to possibly endure some less than desirable behaviors or situations. Um, it's just really crucial that you don't judge people from the outside. Okay, what else do we have? Wow. Oh, this is such an ugly card. The Nine of Swords. Yeah, you're like really going there. <laughs> this decision or this situation is chaotic and it is causing you a lot of anxiety. This is really ugly. I mean, I really hate this card, but it's also because I know I'm an overthinker. And so the Six of Swords is definitely a welcome card in any reading of mine. But when you pair this with this emotional indecision, I mean, it just is not going to bode well for a good decision to come out. So I feel like, yeah, needing to clear, you know, the frog energy, clear your mind and your emotional health, if you will. This looks like, you know, kind of negative mental health, if things are negative or positive, um, out of balance anyway, um, thoughts of the worst case scenario happening. Um, that can be paralyzing, right? Let's see what else we have. Let's get these cards. We have, you are good enough, full moon in Virgo. So this may be drawing you to that time frame because we will be going through Virgo season um, I'm well, Leo season just started when I'm filming this, but this is um, a timeless pick a card. So this could be drawing you to a person, Virgo energy, but it's about recognizing your own value. So in the sense that if you are the one that someone is picking between you and someone else, remind yourself of your value don't let somebody else tell you what your value is or their actions determine your value okay do not allow that you and god are the only one that can determine your value and then we have um, the new moon in capricorn your hard work is paying off and interestingly we had the full moon in capricorn we had two of them um in cancer season so um this is like the opposite you know or the polar other polar part of that is the new moon your hard work is paying off so whatever you're doing to maybe research or get a clear perspective here as above so below um your hard work will pay off I would say that it's not usually ideal to be in any type of three situation. It's just very difficult, I would guess. All right, what else do we have? Archangel Uriel with abundance. So this could be about, um, you know, worries about money and about 
support, right? This could be about trying to get to, um, to come together with, you know, um, your soulmate or your twin flame or your, who you feel is your destiny, your lover, um, and finances are getting in the way. But I feel like, um, what's getting in the way is your manifestation is getting skewed by the nine of swords by being a part of something that maybe is not ideal for you. That's just what I'm getting here. And I feel like this is also about this, you are good enough. This is like recognizing your abundance that is not necessarily re uh, related to um, money, if that makes sense. Like recognizing you're abundantly healthy or that you have a strong support system or that, you know, you have um, many, you know, support system like friends and family that adore you and that you adore or you have a job that is very fulfilling to you. That is all contributes to your abundance and, and focusing on those things and being grateful and appreciative of you know, the blessings that you have is going to foster more abundance. And it's also going to help you with this overthinking or pulling you out of chaotic or toxic situations. Because that definitely looks toxic, right? All right. And then we have, wow. So number 25, which is a seven, the healer. And look at that three and three headed. I mean, there is this everything about the threes here. And it's pile three. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. And three cups. Wow. It's just one too many energies for the lovers. That's all I'm saying. I mean, like I said, I don't judge whatever floats your boat, but um, I feel like that is. Maybe you're having trust issues because of third party situations in the past, but recognize that you will manifest more of those situations if you feel like it was your fault or that it was because you weren't good enough. You are good enough, okay? That's what you need to recognize and be appreciative of the things that you are abundant in, that you are really blessed with. And then other things, you're gonna find other areas that you're blessed in. So this healing is, is really, it's like kind of putting you back together. Look at all this is like diced up rotten flesh and everything. And I just feel like um, this healing is really about bringing you back to yourself, bringing those pieces of yourself the, the, that have rotted away or been unavailable because of not feeling good enough or because of um, not feeling trusting your intuition and being able to pull yourself from like a toxic situation. And I feel like now you're, I don't know, there's the healing is not there. <laughs> it's not there. You need to get out of that situation in order to heal is what I'm getting here with this. And if you look here, this is like, that's like an eye that looks like a drop, but what is that? And then this looks like a moon, but it's got these points right here. So all of it could be like a jewel, or like an opal or a pearl. Oh yeah, so like, you know, you go through these kind of terrible toxic situations, but you do get a, you know, you do, um, there is a pearl to be had is what I'm getting. And this kind of looks like a pearl too. I mean, they're not exactly the same, but they both have that like opalescence quality to them. Interesting. What else do we have? Pisces, I believe. We have these two water signs. Number 24 may be significant. Do we have other numbers that I didn't mention here? Oh, 25. So I believe that I'm healed. Maybe you need to believe in three-headed snakes. I don't know. Um, hmm. Hmm. 
Okay, I'm gonna read the keywords on this um, P Pisces, I believe. Number 24. Twenty-four, twenty-five. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um. So the it says I must be a mermaid. I have no fear of depths and a great fear of shallow living. Hmm. Okay. So just the key words that may pull us in here: um, dreams, visions, surrender, paranoia. That's paranoia right there. Confusion. Um, a sense of being erased or having fragile boundaries, sensitivity, compassion, serving others, linking up with the collective, wanting to merge, knowing all but having trouble sorting it out, trouble getting on track, floating and feeling adrift, the sleaze factor, self undoing, that is self undoing, right? It's like all that anxiety and overthinking will tear you apart. Um, but basically it's talking about compassion, oneness, art, the unconscious, music, water, and being a victim. So I feel like that is probably about believing in yourself. You are good enough. And we have that polarity here with Virgo and Pisces and healing that you know like you're um you are good enough and you're overthinking and kind of wild ideas can really um carry you away and you need like healing with that is what i'm getting clearing your thoughts this frog energy clearing your washing your mind if you will all right what else do we have here we have the sun, beautiful. Your immortal spirit, purpose, and destiny is involved. And I said that. I said that about, you know, like, um, uh, where did I say that? Maybe I was talking in pile two. So you, that may be, pile two may also be something you might want to look into. But, um, your purpose and destiny is involved. Getting clear in the mind and what you believe, healing that so that you can make the right decisions and, and the sun sheds light on that, right? Is is the light, lights the way for you is what I'm getting here. And carry, it is your life purpose, but it carries you to your life purpose and your destiny, success, victory, your hard work is paying off. That is that success here. The abundance, the healing, the support. I mean, it's like almost all the cards, right? And then we have Gemini, um, which the lovers is Gemini. The energy is commun um, communicative, mischievous, lively, witty, and informative. Stimulating exchange is possible. So you could be a Gemini, you could be dealing with a Gemini, but I think it's also um, something that could have happened with the sun in Pisces or sun in Gemini. That could have been the start of this situation or um, when this choice presented itself. Um, you just haven't, you've been in this um, indecision. I feel like you're kind of going in a spiral if you see that spiral there. Um, round in circles because of maybe this chaos, this overthinking, or being a part of a situation where the energy is split three ways instead of it being, be you know, between two people. All right, let's get some, let's get some tarot from the Naked Heart Tarot. Get any more insight for pile three? Any more insight for pile three? I'm gonna get one more shuffle. I'm not trying to keep you too long. Oh, 
my spirit. Oh, here we go. We have the Wheel of Fortune. So I feel like that is this as above, so below, because you have that, you're always going to have the highs and lows of things. The sun is the higher perspective, right? The star. Um, but I feel like the ups and downs of things, um, I feel like it's your choice. That's what I'm getting this. It's your choice and your decision of how the, the the wheel turns. That's what I'm getting here. Very weird. Um, what else do we have? This is like direction too. Which direction should you go? I feel like that's what you're asking. Or which person should you pick? Or like you're just not trusting. But just know that if you really don't trust yourself, you really don't believe yourself and your intuition, um, the divine will pick something for you. And it's usually something that's going to make or help you to learn a lesson, a karmic lesson at that. What else do we have? Not to put any pressure or anything. We have the judgment card. Yeah, I feel like there is something here where um, it's, it is, you know, um, where was it about your destiny? Yeah, the sun here. It is about your life purpose and destiny. It may not be directly that, but this is what leads you to that or gets you back on track to that. So it, it does affect things. You need this six of swords. You need to get out of this overthinking so that you can get back into the frame of mind of being able to fulfill your purpose or to even hear the call, you know, of whatever purpose you feel that you have or that you feel spirit is calling of you. What else do we have? But this is very um, karma and destiny, just really wrapped up here. You are destined for healing. You are destined for abundance. You are good enough. You're destined for a, to believe in yourself. You're destined for um, a beautiful relationship. A supportive, you know, spiritual tribe here, a family. All right, what else do we have? And we have the Seven of Pentacles. And for some reason, when I said our family, and then I got this, is like the tree can represent family, but I'm really getting ancestors. So this is all could be about you clearing, um, you know like a blood the family bloodline this could definitely be something from ancestors and like ancestral wisdom being accessed i'm getting that for sure with the with the will of fortune um so it's not just about where you're investing or whether you should invest or is are things worth it or not it's also about where um where are you finding your value and where are you growing how are you growing yourself that's what i'm getting here <laughs> by healing and look at that the tree the tree wow yeah they look the same similar all right what else oh my music's ending let's see what kind of interesting <laughs> video comes on next okay never mind and we have the eight of swords so yeah i feel like you've been feeling just very stuck because of this indecision. You can't see the way. Your intuition with all this water energy and with this choice here, Pisces energy um, and the sun, you are meant to use your intuition. Stop relying on what your eyes see and trust your intuition. It may not look like what you expect it to look like. That's what I'm getting here. At the bottom of the deck is the Queen of Swords. So, yeah, you will get focused. You will be very clear when you um, take into account these other things. You will get the clarity when you clear your mind, when you clear your emotional body, when you access that ancestral wisdom. You will be very clear and healed and be able to move towards your future and your your spiritual calling or your life purpose and it's going to be worth it it's going to give you the potential to grow into something really strong here and beautiful 
you'll be able to see the beauty. It won't always be thorn free, but it, you know, you'll be able to, you'll be strong enough to conquer all of that. That's what I'm getting here. So those are the messages that came through for you, Pile 3. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe. And remember, the universe has your back, and so do I. Take care.